book your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. Hello and welcome to Owen the Town. I'm Lou Gregory and here's what's coming up today. It's back-to-back wins for the first time this season as Luton win 2-0 at Hull thanks to an own goal and an absolute worldie from Henry Lansbury. Got us all out of our seats on Friday night. A brilliant game and finally back-to-back wins. And I know we've kind of been this season a bit like, is it a good start to the season? But look, we were up to fifth on Friday night. I think we're down to ninth now, but it's been a good couple of weeks. Uh, to be a Luton fan and hopefully we we continue that against Huddersfield. Uh, tonight we discuss that game in more detail. I'm joined to do that with Bataro and Dave. Evening guys. Hello. Evening. I know we'd like to analyse everything but my word, well, Weldy from Lansbury weren't it? It was so, so good. Beautiful, wasn't it? Just amazing. I think, like I said to you earlier, it gets better with every single viewing. I watched it so many times when I got oh, home. Yeah. Just on repeat. Showed my girlfriend like five times. It got to a stage yeah. where I was like, do you want to see the goal? She's like, I've already seen it like eight times. Like you've shown me so many times. So I was like, sorry. At least she watched it though, like a couple of times. I, I made her watch it. Once, I made her watch like the main angle and all the highlights. And then she's like, I'm done now. <laughs> yeah. It's a stunning strike. No, stunning so strike. Good. And actually come at a really good time in the game too. But brilliant, brilliant goal. And just a nice away win because it could have been trickier with the news that holds the manager early in the day. So you kind of think, how's it going to work? Is it that, that, you know, that everyone around the place is happy that it's happened, so they're going to be up for the game. But it, we kind of dealt with the situation and the occasion, didn't we? Yeah. We don't know what was going on in their dressing room. I mean, um, in our preview uh, podcast, you know, the, the whole fan was not very optimistic about how they were going to play. However, having said that, mm-hmm. uh, you don't expect a, a team to lose their manager on the day of a game. Uh, g- genuinely. Strange one, wasn't it? it? Generally, they'd have had more... more um, Reasons to sack him after they'd lost to us, right? Yeah, it's weird because very weird. Like you said, they've, they've had two weeks of international break to potentially why, do why this. Leave it why is it? Minute? Why is it on the day of the game? I don't know if something's drastically happened on that day that has made it happen. But you know, when you when I saw that news, I instantly thought, "Oh no, this could be a tough game tonight." And part of me thinking we're going to lose because I'm negative anyway. But, but yeah, I think either way, it's it's a tough game either way. I mean, yeah, we might have won two nil. Probably wasn't the best viewing for a, a neutral, but from our point of view, it was a great, wasn't it? It was a, a great viewing, but yeah. But I mean, if they'd sacked him, obviously like they had sacked him, sorry, but if they hadn't sacked him, then it, it might have still been the same outcome. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you never know. I think yeah, sometimes it's a psychological thing because occasionally it does happen where they sack their manager and they go and beat a team straight away. Yeah, I get, I get that. I, I, I sort of agree with Luke though. You know, I actually thought, oh my goodness, they're going to be right up for it now to prove a point. And, and you know, when you, when you do look at their form, although they've not been very good, they was only two points behind us, or put it two or three points behind us. They had us. a really good start to the season, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. And, you know, this division is so tight at the moment. You, one win springs you up the table and, and quite close. So I was quite surprised they sacked him. But then again... And like you said, Batara, when we were watching on Friday, like the players have got the money that... Seri from Fulham yeah. last season, you were saying, must be sad for him winning every week at Fulham yeah. now being at home. But then you said look at his bank account, didn't you? So yeah, there is <laughs> exactly, that as well. Exactly, exactly. But then they've got some talented players and clearly they're exploring the international market and they are getting a lot of players in from abroad that maybe need that time to gel. But um wasn't to be on Friday night for them. Thankfully for us, we, we get the away win. And these are some three-word reviews of Hull Nil Luton 2 on Friday night. Callum says, very comfortable viewing. Phil says, professional away win. Daz, class on grass. John says, safe hands, Horvath. Uh, JP said, control from the start. James says onwards and upwards. Uh, Connor says Adebayo looking better. And Chris says mauled the Tigers. Adebayo looked good the other day, didn't he? Um, I think he looked sharper than he's looked yeah. the whole season. And, uh, you know, he was very unlucky not to score, wasn't he? But, yeah, he looked he looked on form for the start of the game, absolutely. Yeah, and he, he didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, he didn't get bullied as much. I mean, he's, uh, he doesn't really get bullied, does he? But a few times he's lost possession and... Not won his headers, whereas I felt the other day he was winning his headers. 
think and do you, do you, do you the think down for Clark when it, that led to the goal, wasn't it? I think it was yeah, him as well. It was so, that. But yeah. do you not think now, um, like last season when he was scoring every week, excuse me, <clears throat> when he was scoring every week, he was being marked hard, you know, more. Now he's not been scoring so much and maybe they're concentrating on Morris a bit more. And I think on Saturday or Friday night, I think he was outstanding for a lot of the game. Yeah, he was. Maybe, yeah. But yeah, he, to be fair, I mean, I think you said the other day, you know, like he needed that to go in that shot. He obviously hit the bar and, yeah. you know, and go and he was like, oh, he, needs, he needs that to go in for his confidence. But I think he would have taken confidence from that, to be fair. The fact that he got a clean connection on it, it wasn't it wasn't an easy take either. It was quite a difficult technique. I know you don't yeah. believe in luck, but it's unlucky that on another day that could hit the underside of the bar and bounce in, that it just bounced. Yeah, no, perfect. But um, which is lucky, I guess. Is that is that lucky? Create yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, here whatever. we go again. <laughs> no, we're not getting to that. You know what I mean? But um, but yeah, take great confidence from. Yeah, from I the think you'll tell you that. And I think his hold, some of his hold up play as well was pretty spot on as well. And maybe sometimes he needs to be a bit sharper, but look, it'll come with him. I think maybe he does need the goal, but I think, like you say, even getting that connection that led to the goal. He'll be happy with that anyway. He was the one change from the Blackburn game coming in for Woodrow, who Nathan Jones said post match or pre match that he picked up a little injury. Um, obviously, strength and depth like this time last year, maybe you're looking at you losing one of your strikers and who do you bring in? But the fact we've got four brilliant strikers at the moment is just uh, amazing. And like we said, the goal helped us out. It, it kind of. It was an all right start to the game, wasn't it? And it, it just kind of made us feel like, okay. We can now try and build on this. And hold didn't really threaten, did they? No, up until that point, you know, we were, we were, I think we were dominant from the off, to be fair. And when the corner, did we get a corner? I can't remember. We had, we had a couple of corners fairly early. But the actual goal itself um, from the cross, um, the way that Eddie Bayo struck the ball, it deserved a goal. Mm-hmm. And when that hit the bar, we thought that's over. Uh, to, see it, to, to see it hit, um, I can't remember their player's name now, if I'm honest. But to see him hit that and then just go in, he was too concerned about holding off Morris and clearing the ball. Yeah, yeah. I remember you shouting at the time. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, if he wasn't holding this and that. Yeah, but if he wasn't holding it, Morris... would be all right. Yeah, but if, <laughs> if, 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 Dave, it's OK, we've scored. I, I know that, but the, what I'm saying is if he'd have concentrated on what he was doing rather than pulling yeah. Morris or trying to keep Morris away from the ball, he might have concentrated it. Wouldn't, he, he might have never clear it. But, you know, I like to agree with you. That's a bit of luck and we deserve a bit of luck because we've been playing like that away... All season. Hull fans were getting a bit annoyed with their style of play, trying to play out from the back and it weren't quite getting the passes right. And you got to give credit to us for that, for maybe yeah. the high press or cutting passing lanes. Whatever way we set up, worked perfectly to combat what Hull wanted to do on Friday night. And we did force errors. And you look at the goals, you can kind of say like that that was a, a part in the play. Well, to be fair, we discussed it as well. So you say about possession or whatever else. I think we were sat there going, oh, we're happy. I mean, they. <clears throat> I think I believe they had 70% possession, was it? Something like that. Yeah. And um, seventy percent possession. Well, sorry, I know we normally go. We'll get into the stats in a bit, but I've just looked at the possession stats. And producer Jacob's done <laughs> no, no. something wrong here, isn't he? Jacob, it's been a long weekend for him, mate. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get to that. We'll get to yeah. it. Um, but yeah, like I said about the whole um, possession thing, you can have as much of the ball if you want it. If it's in your own half and peeing around, back, peeing around with it and making back pass. Because let's face it, they weren't really, they weren't penetrating, were they? They weren't doing nothing with those passes. No. And you said it before about the stats team and whatever else at, at wherever it was saying about was it Brentford, wasn't it? Saying about Luton off the ball. Off the ball. And how good Very they good were. Off the ball. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, you'd I'd say that. That's yeah. good then. Yeah. Yeah. But um but yeah, I mean and we feel comfortable. When a team goes to try and dominate possession, we feel comfortable. We'll say, Yeah, go on then, you have yeah, the ball. Like, you have the ball, I'm happy if you have the ball. On Friday, straight away. You're sitting you said to me, you went, Well, they can have the ball. I'd be so happy then to have the ball because we, we looked sharp on the counter that kind of yeah. thing and we went yeah 100% true and uh, during the stats our goalkeeper didn't have a save to make no no, not one and that just Brilliant. shows you how, how, how well we played and if they go sideways backwards all the time they can have as many shots as they like not one on target not one so our defence had a good game our midfield had a good game we, we did what we had to do we did a good job 30% um, possession who it cares means nothing, who cares it? possession means nothing if you're not going to do anything with who it cares? that's the thing yeah. we had another corner that caused them problems again pots at the far post and maybe alarm bells ringing there for Hull you know conceded the most set pieces in the league um, they come incredibly close they're making it one all after a, a massive 30 yard strike by Regan Slater hit the bar 
I think Potts flicked it. Potts said, didn't uh, it? Yeah. Just off the line, thankfully, didn't, didn't go in. And that would have been just typical our luck that a 30 yarder takes a deflection and yeah. goes in the top corner. But I think we were sat there, riding our luck, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, we were sat there. I think straight away I went, well, that's in. That's like one of them ones. Next minute, it's like, oh, that hasn't gone in. But yeah. Count your lucky stars. Count your lucky stars. <laughs> um, free kick in from us, Morris Header. He, brilliant technique to win this header, and the keeper's made a, a brilliant save to tip it around the post. But at that stage, you're thinking, well, we're in the top here. We can get another goal. And the chance for Lansbury's goal that I thought the chance had kind of gone when yeah, Morris yeah. crosses it in, a, uh, Jordan Clark has his shot. And I'm thinking, all right, yeah, chance has gone there. But when the ball comes out to Lansbury and he smashes oh, that in. Wow. It was, just, it was just one of those moments when it, like, has he scored? Has it gone in? Oh look, the net's moving. It's gone in. But you couldn't—you can almost believe it, could you? Really? No, not really. But the, the the shot from Clark initially was a good strike. Uh, goalkeeper made a fairly good save. Well, that was quite at him. You know, made a good save. And you've got to think then, uh, Addy Bayo wins the ball back. Don't forget that. And then we had a almost aimless cross to nobody, which is cleared by their head by their defence. I did really. see a comment on Twitter from just like a neutral fan who replied to Sky Sports saying, why didn't the whole guy just like chest it back down to his keeper? He was under no pressure. Yeah, no, there was no one it's, there. There was no one there. It and was he said it away. It was an aimless cross to, well, it was, you well, know, he's, he's going across the goal, obviously, so he's aiming there, obviously, but uh, there was no one there. Yeah. And the header was weak, but the strike was phenomenal. You know, you, you, you won't see a better, if, if that's not goal of the season this year, I, I will be shocked we are going to talk about that gold again in a bit but I personally think it's the best long range goal I've ever seen Luton score and yeah I'm 27 really? so obviously you've seen a lot more yeah, long no, range strikes than me look, they are, in my 15 years or whatever it was when I was started supporting Luton I was quite late so I didn't start until like 11, 12 I don't think I've seen a better strike but we'll get onto that in a, a bit later but there's one for you to mm. watch your listening right now to ponder. Um, unreal technique, brilliant celebration, 2-0. And apart from that, really, we nothing much else really happened in the game. We had a penalty shout. Morris should have definitely had a penalty. Let's be honest, his shirt has been completely pulled by their defender. Did it start outside the box though, that? Mm. I, don't, I don't really remember. I just remember it. Way, I think yeah. we should have had a pen. Um, and like you said, Hull, no shots on target. No, and it, it, when we were watching the game, although we were always a bit pessimistic at times, when you sit there and go, you know, typical Luton, we'll concede and then we'll defend deep and, you know, we'll give it away. You kind of felt like that. that yeah. You felt like ticking into 70, if we could weather that storm, which we did, where they're on top a bit, maybe they're putting balls in the box, they're having half chances, they're getting into areas, but not quite getting the ball where it needs to go. You think if they get one here, this could be a squeaky bum time end to the game. Yeah. But it didn't happen, did it? But you're right. And and you because we've seen it before and we've seen games where we've been dominant, uh, you know, in regards to, you know, a couple of goals up mm. and then they score and then then, then our defence sits deeper and, and we don't attack as much as we used to in the midfield and we, we're not pressing at all. And before you know it, it's two all. So that would have been a disaster. But however, our game plan was fantastic on Friday. Yeah, and I, do you know what? To be fair, also, our game management was good too. Yeah. Very professional. <clears throat> That's the main thing. And I said to so many people, I said to you boys, I said, look, if we play, you know, not scintillating football and we're sitting there watching performances like that every single week and winning 2-0, I mean, of course you would take it. I mean, that's a bit obvious. That's an obvious thing to say. But what I'm saying is, I do not mind if we're not playing great football and getting results. And if we're making team, because you know, the thing is, it's not just like whole city or your whoever else that we're doing it to. Mm-hmm. We're doing it to some bigger teams as well with like a lot bigger budgets and whatever else. Not that that always matters. Well, clearly in our case, I mean, we've got to the playoffs last season. But do you know what I'm trying to say? It's almost like we're making good teams look very average yeah, yeah. by playing a style of football that sort of like maybe prevents them. It's something you have to admire about the way we play though and how good we are like off the ball and... Like like we said the other day, we're happy for a team to have possession. Yeah. Like we're we, you know, we can as a fan be a bit nervous when they're attacking their goal. But I think if they have the ball, just relax. Yeah, calm, of course. And, you know, it's not like I mean, it's not like when a team attacks us, they're, they're always in our final third either. You don't ever see them like in the area, like looking like they're going to score either. It's never like that. So, I mean. <laughs> I think I've heard people say, like, with Luton, they're just very good at what we do, which is being direct. And 
yeah. being on the counter and being on the second balls and um, and pressing and you know letting people have the we're just very good at what we do which is why we did have all the success last season yeah most of the success let them have the ball in non-dangerous positions shut them up early yeah I agree with that can't wait for the next game um, some stats yeah. in from the game holes 11 shots 0 on target Luton's 10 shots 5 on target and according to producer Jacob Hull had 30% <laughs> possession and Luton had 30% possession oh, so I'm not right. sure where all the other possession went producer Jacob will uh, like an answer please I don't think it did maths in uh, Plymouth <laughs> 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 sorry Jacob I'm sorry Jacob um Hull have lost their last four matches against Luton, with the last one being at Kenilworth Road, that 3-0 in 2019. Hull have conceded the most goals this season with 23, and Alan Campbell made 50 appearances for Luton. Wow. Friday. That's, that's coming on quick, isn't he? 50, 50 wow. for Alan Campbell. Good Lord. Um, well, and can he do a, at least 150 more? Let's hope. Let's hope so. In the Premier League. Yeah. yeah. In the new stadium. Uh, was Lansbury's goal the best long-range strike Luton have ever scored? That's the question we asked you on social media the other day. Uh, I personally think it's the best long-range strike I've seen Luton score in my time as supporting Luton Town. Can I just say, like, potentially, I think that could be true. Obviously, I've got one I can think of, but, you know. Yeah. But that Lansbury goal, right, was almost Roberto Carlos-esque. Yeah. And how many, for how many years have people been talking about his goals that he scored 15, years, 15 20 years ago? And whatever else. I, see, I know, obviously, Brazil uh, International, World Cup, blah, 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 blah. About 15, 20 years? <sighs> this guy. I, this I guy. would say. I would say. <laughs> no, all, no, all I'm saying is, right, all I'm saying is, if Roberto Carlos has scored a goal like that, oh, yeah, they've been all everyone been banging on yeah. about it for like another 50 years because it's Lansbury. I I, people are talking about it now, but people won't remember that in a few years' time. I didn't watch the Football League programme. Did they big it up? At all? I, I didn't see it. But I didn't see it. So I don't know what they said. I can't we remember have, now. Listen. Pissed. When you support a team, you'll see plenty of goals and you'll look back at it and go, my God, they were great goals. I've seen some really long strikes. I've seen some really important goals. Uh, but that one, this season, is definitely going to be the goal of the season, without a shadow of a doubt. And it was technique was fantastic. The way it's, he, he hit it yeah, and the way it skimmed across the I mean, Reese Burke's goal against Blackburn last week was really good. And the way he, he strides forward and it's a left foot and it curls. But I just feel like the technique on this, this is so yeah, much yeah. more difficult than just like... I'm just going to say, just like a long ranger like Reese Burke scored, or but Reese Burke's wasn't as far out as that one. I mean, that was 30, no, no, exactly. 35 yards, 35 yards easily, 30 yards, 35 yards. Yeah, and the, the fact that he sliced across it as well, it was and like a, it was, spun it off, like he spun off his boot and the ground. It's crazy. And that's the thing as well, producer. When I put this idea to producer Jacob about talking about this on the podcast, and he kind of went, "What about like Steve McNaughty against Southport?" And you know, you look back at that goal and you think it was a good goal, but can you with a long range strike? potentially look at your opponents, the division, and go, we've done this four leagues higher, and technically oh. the technique is... Yeah, uh, you, you could, yeah, obviously you but, will. But, but I would also say, and, and no disrespect to McNulty or anybody who played us in that division, our players are better now. So we're higher up, but we're... So it, you're playing like for like in that division... You're playing the same side side of players than we can compare we, though. We can't really compare. I mean, just because it's like lower down the leagues, like four leagues, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, because still the goal, goal looks good and it's because an absolute screamer. Like then it's a screamer, isn't it? Because the team we were playing were at the same level as us at that time. Yeah, our players were in that level of playing, and their regard is not as good as the players now. So therefore, they probably yeah. shouldn't be scoring goals like that. No, in that so sense, I, maybe. for me personally, I mean, I love McNulty's goal. It was brilliant to be there that day. But for me, I thought it was almost like hit and hope it goes in. Whereas I felt... You'd tell me that. Well, no, <laughs> he's not happening. Dave. He's not happening. You're not saying, no one's telling him that. He's no one's that. He volleyed it well. No, listen, he volleyed <laughs> it well. He volleyed it towards the goal. But I just felt that on Friday, Landry knew I don't want to say McNaughty's goal was no. easy, but I do kind of feel like it comes out to you he it's just, a volley. He volleyed it back. But it's kind of so just like fair, a looping volley. Yeah, it? it wasn't easy. It came out of the sky, mate. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It was like a pigeon dropped out of the sky and he just booted it back to his home. <laughs> pigeon dropped out. It was a brilliant goal. It was a brilliant goal, but it, it could have gone anywhere, couldn't it? I think you look back at Lansbury's and it's just the fact that the ball's bouncing out to him and he's just had the technique to kick it into like, it's bounced once off the ground and it's just, like you said, spun yeah, with just, so much power, I can't believe how mate, powerful it was. He it was just so straight. unreal. It was the way he, it was straight to hitting it, like he was so straight, like facing the goal, and he just hit across it like that. But to be fair, I mean, 
No wonder the celebration came out with the lawnmower and whatever else, because that groundsman <laughs> obviously done a good job of that pitch. Yeah. I think he appreciated it himself. But talk, should we go back? Should we talk, talk about long range goals? Because I've got one back in my mind. Yeah, mate, tell me. From a few years ago. Um, this is going to be a bit of a weird one. Jamie Hand. Yeah. Versus Gateshead. Yeah. In the conference. I think I remember this one. Wow. Left, was it left foot? Left foot, right foot volley. Top, left foot top volley. Ends. Took it on a chest or whatever. It bounced and he's whacked it in the far court. Yeah. Oh, mate. And the, I think it was the uh, Oak Road end, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Oldie. It was a good goal. It was a good goal for me. It's nowhere near the, the one on Friday for me personally. I just think the one on Friday was so different to what you normally just see along. It, it's not like, it's a bit like, it was identical to Thiago's in the Champions League for Liverpool last season. Um, no, I can't remember. It. I can't remember. It. I'll show you in a I've bit. Seen there it, are so many good strikes, so many good strikes, and, and some more important than the one that Lansbury scored. Some are much more important. So we see what people said then about was Lansbury's goal the best long range strike Luton have ever scored? Matt says for difficulty of technique, I'd say this and McNulty or Matt Spring for the occasion. Uh, Ethan says since I can remember, yes, perfect power and extremely exquisite technique. True. David says, it's got to be Hill v Everton for me. Credit to Mick for unsettling the defence. Steam for holding one of the defenders off. And when it came out to Ricky Hill, that shot was unstoppable. Daily left to talk us through this one. Ricky Hill versus Everton. He's talking about the, the semi. If he's talking about the FA Cup semi-final, um, his strike uh, was... Did I go top left? Do I remember? Uh, if, you're looking at the, if you're looking at the TV show, uh, it's top right. From where we were, okay, it was top, top left. left yeah. So when we were looking at it, it was top left. But it just pinged in. And nothing more than we deserved that day. The whole end where I was standing went mental. And I genuinely thought we were going to get to the FA Cup final. And then that would have been the most important goal in, in his Luton career, really. So, yeah, I go with that. Dale says, not the best, depending on how long you've been watching Hat as well. Up in the top five, I've seen knowing 38 years of going. Mark Pembridge takes some beating, though. Lansbury was some strike. Fantastic technique. True. No, you're not going to talk through Mark Pembridge? No, I'm not going to talk about it. I'll look no. it up in a second and I'll remember it. Because <laughs> okay. I've been going for a little bit longer than 38 years and I would say, um, you know, memory doesn't strike well. Paul says no, Tim Breaker v Derby. Simon says no. No, hang on, hang on. You can't just skip the Tim Breaker goal. Uh, is this you, the one you showed me the other day? Tom well, I'll, I'll show Bataro. There it is, Bataro. Yeah, just yeah, press I've play, just it, press yeah. play. That was a really, really important goal. And he struck that from how far out is that? Look at the That's shot on that. That's very, amazing. Very Straight far, past yeah. Pete Shorten, who couldn't move. Yeah, good shot. Um, yeah, and, but the most yeah. important thing about... Were you there, were you? No, but the reason yeah, there, the most great. important thing about that game is we had to win it to stay up. You know, and that gave us the start that nobody expected. Yeah. No, so and so important. Unreal. It was such a brilliant goal. Simon says, no, but it's the best daisy cut I've ever seen. That thing barely left the ground the whole way in and had to get past so many people. Wonderful stuff. Uh, Craig says technique wise probably as for the best oh god you have to help me this, this name John-Louis Valois yes or Oli <laughs> Lee come on mate uh, John-Louis Valois goal on his debut into the Oak Road end struck it sublime not Oak Road sorry the Kenny Road end was it a top corner it really yeah absolutely an angle. Yeah. stunning stunning strike um, uh, um, well we know what Oli Lee did but the Valois strike at the time he thought wow we've got a player here and just really for our younger listeners, the Ollie Lee goal was an unreal strike again. Are halfway line goals overrated? What do you think? Depends on the situation. If there's a goalkeeper in goal, then no. I mean, to be fair, that was some strike. No, it was the some strike. Was he was a very far He was in the right out, yeah. position, really. People were going, oh, but he wasn't in his air. A goalkeeper you don't need should, uh, to be in that, in that position. For me personally, a goalkeeper shouldn't be beaten from over the halfway line. He's beyond the halfway line. It happens. Mm. A f- it's happened. No, I, no, they shouldn't be beaten from that. Not at all. I would say that their positioning is wrong. But however, his strike was good. His his um, view of what to do was great. You know, his intuition was great. Yeah, yeah. And he struck it well. And it, it was a you good say, goal. You say a goalkeeper shouldn't be beaten the halfway. And you no, probably he shouldn't. Be, shouldn't. No, but at the same shouldn't. time, though, Dave, you don't expect you can't expect your goalkeeper to stand on his six yard box or on, on his line. Like no, game. I don't expect that. He might be expected to come out and do a bit of sweeper keeping. Do you know what I mean? Realistically, so if he's on the edge of his area from how many yards? 70 yards away. And he struck it from 70 yards away. And it's, to be fair, it was some strike. It was like lift. It was swerve yeah, on I'm it. Not, I'm not saying it, it wasn't a good goal. I'm saying I, wouldn't, I would be really disappointed if our keeper was, was beaten from that distance. Yeah, you would. But then sometimes you've got to take your hat off to it and just go, fair play. That's a 
that's a, a bang great, and strike. Yeah, that's a great bit of like, you know what I mean? Technique and whatever else. Some other goals that people said were really good. Ben, Matt Spring, everything else is a tap in. <laughs> Obviously the Watford goal. Yeah. Uh, Dean says the same, has to be Spring goal against Watford. Uh, the fact it was against made it, uh, Watford made it so much better. Um, and Ash says, I don't know if you count this as a long range, but Alan McCormack's against Yeovil was my favourite. When it yeah, come out from the corner, guy. and again he had to hit a running ball as well. So can we some great about, options in there though? Can isn't we there? not talk about Matt Spring just for a second? Go on, then. come on! Go on then. The, no, just just think about how he won the ball. You know it, where he won the ball. It was a solid tackle, and in these days, probably would have been given as a, a foul because someone had been rolling around clutching their bloody ankles. He stood up, he sprinted on, and he thwacked it into yeah. that. To- it was such a thrill to be there and see that go in. And, uh, you know, no more than we deserved on that night. So, oh, yeah, yeah Matty well. Spring, uh, yeah, good for him. Good goal. And hopefully someone can recreate that in a few weeks' time. Oh, I hope so. It'll be me. <laughs> and, mate, if it's you. If it's days. you, we're going to say, yeah, if you score against Watford. <laughs> I probably, to be fair, if I even got a ticket, I'd be ejected anyway from running the pitch. So, no, no point, is there? Well. We'll recreate on FIFA anyway. Okay, sounds good. Sweet. Um Something else kind of related to best goal or whatever. We saw this on, on Twitter by Habi Hatta and producer Jacob messaged me earlier and is like, I really like this question, so I think we should include it. What's your favourite game as a Luton fan you've witnessed live? Because I guess like you look at the journey we had last season, there was so many potential memories to be made, which unfortunately wasn't to be. But we've had some cracking games since I've been a fan. So if you have to look back and, and pick one, have you, have you got a favourite that you've witnessed live that you just go, yeah, it's my favourite game? <clears throat> Newcastle, to be fair, for me. Yeah? Just because it's Newcastle and, yeah. It was a good weekend. I feel like you, you kind of take in the occasion, don't you? The away day and the amount of fans we had there at Newcastle. It was a brilliant weekend and we were very unlucky not to take a, a draw but, in that game. Uh, what, what do we, why do we like our favourite games? Because I've got a few and I've been going for years. Like, so you say Newcastle. I remember Newcastle at home in when Kenilworth Road's pitch was mud and we mm. were losing 2-0, I think. And it was on TV on the big match and we ended up pulling that back and winning. Uh, so that was a great game. It's a memory. But if anybody my age doesn't say the cup final, they're mental. It was the, yeah, it was the best day out I've ever had watching Luton. And I've, I know I've gone home and away quite a lot. But that was momentous and the game and the way it finished and the atmosphere was amazing. So for me, that is the, my favourite game I've ever witnessed at Luton. But there are so many others I've loved, so many others. It has to, surely it's got to be the 88 cut final, it has to be, yeah, doesn't it? If you're, not, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in the age group that went and yeah. you don't say the 88 cut final, there's something wrong with you. I mean, from, obviously from my point of view, I'm only saying Newcastle because I think it's more the weekend. It wasn't the, the game itself. The game wasn't really that great, was it? It was a mm-hmm. decent game of football. But it's nowhere near one of the... It's just the weekend that we had out, but, out there. But, it was a great weekend yeah. out on the last two, whatever time. I guess that's what it is, isn't it? It's what... I guess, producer Zegers, what's your favourite game as a Luton fan you've witnessed live? But so it has to be for you kind of like, do you take it as the occasion? Because if you had taken the occasion, like we went to Exeter away, that 4-1 win. Oh, but and we was in their end as well. We were in the oh, home end because game, yeah. we were only allocated like 200 tickets. It sold out. So we managed to log on to Exeter's yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, site and and get a couple of tickets to go to Sand in the home well, end. Yeah. It was a brilliant day. It was a brilliant game, a brilliant night out. And Any, I don't know, I think, I look back on that, I'll, I'll never forget that. And it was a memorable game. It was a memorable occasion. But there have been many times we've been when there's been lots of Luton fans there. Think Sunderland away. Think that one. Yeah, Sunderland away. Um, for me, that. again, you know, I flew. Have I told you that before? I flew to the game. <laughs> but, you know, things like that take it. In board, but you know, other memorable games scoring the last two goals uh, was that at home against Hull, yeah, yeah, and memorable games where Norwich you, away in the FA Cup, Norwich away in the FA Cup. So, there's been so many good games, but for me, you c- and I hope we do one day, but you can't beat 88 for me. Playoffs as well, well, look, the playoffs, the amount of playoffs we've had, yeah, the playoffs, yeah, were we great. lost them all, haven't we? The thing is, with the playoffs though, that you kind of like especially the Blackpool ones, they're obviously the most obvious ones where you look back at the highs and lows you experience. Like when we're yeah. away at Blackpool and it's that Sunday at what, like... Five o'clock? Was it a half it five? A five and we were there from yeah, like yeah. half eleven. So you're there in Blackpool all day. You have a little wander around. You go around a little bit of a pub yeah. crawl, get some fish and chips. And then before you know it, we're 2-1 up 
That fish and chips was terrible. By it was way. absolutely it was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Isaac Vassell and Dan Potts, I think, scored the day. And when Isaac Vassell made it 2 1, that away. And you, yeah, yeah. mate, you were. You were gone. You were down oh, them stairs. I don't know how I didn't break my leg that day. To be fair. <laughs> we was right at the back, weren't we? Next yeah, to the yeah. wall bit. And uh, yeah, I've managed to somehow sprint a- down to the front across all the seats. It's the highs and lows of it yeah. of the playoffs. And then obviously we lose that three two Mark Cullen hat trick. And then the next game, it's like we go one nil down. It's like you're low. And then we go three one up. And when Hilton scores that pen, and it's just that roller coaster. And I think it's not the, your favorite game, but. I think they're the favourite moments, yeah, aren't they? As you a remember fan, certain you know. games. That's the best game of football, but you remember it. You remember like, them. It's can I the feel, also, the feeling, isn't it? Can I also add that my favourite games also include any victory we've had against Watford, home or away, that I've been at. Mm-hmm. That Watford game, I know we weren't actually there witnessing it live, but we witnessed it pretty much live on iFollow that day when Colo makes them. And for a lot of Luton fans, it's the first time I've ever seen Luton beat Watford in my lifetime, and I'm sure... Yeah there's thousands of other Luton fans out there I've never seen that before so to do that it's just a shame we're never there we, we always say that but um, some brilliant suggestions on Twitter coming in as well Ryan says not for the actual game itself but the whole party and celebration atmosphere in the Notts County away game yeah. when we got promoted to League oh, 2 that was brilliant, you man. instantly forget that but now he said it what an amazing day that was yeah. it was an amazing day it would have been capped off with a win would have been brilliant but the atmosphere that day was superb Joe says Bournemouth at home last year has to be up there. And that's true. You forget yeah. about Bournemouth last year. And you kind of think because it was only eight months ago, whatever it was, that you kind of do forget about that game and how well, the, the ending unreal that, that, that yeah. finish was. And the atmosphere again in the Kenny, it was rocking. It was brilliant. And I love those sort of days. Just thought of another one. Portsmouth at home. Portsmouth <laughs> at home. That's one. what Tony says here. Pompey at home in the snow. How we only went one lap at half time after what is the best 45 minutes I've ever seen us play is still a mystery. Yeah, it was pouring down with snow, wasn't it? Real cold day. Does it pour with snow? <laughs> <laughs> but what does it do then? What does it do when it's just falling down from the sky? Is like it pouring snow? Do you, can you pour with snow? It pours with rain. You can pour snow out of a, probably a cup if you've got like, that yeah, snow in it. You're just digging it deeper, mate. Don't worry about it. No, there's a, Tony, Tony is right. Does anyone ever go it's pouring down with snow outside? It's blizzard conditions. No one... Oh, it just you just pour, go it's snowing. Down with, you just go, oh, it's heavy snow. Oh, it's heavy it. snow, yeah. Slushing it down with snow out there. Tipping, oh, hey, <laughs> tipping down with snow. You know, Either that way, idea. tipping down with snow. It was <laughs> snowing. It was doing whatever. But it was a great day. When but it Tony's was. not wrong. That was a brilliant game. And again, remember how important that was because when, when we won that, we went yeah. top of the league and we never left the top. I think any time George Moncur scored, I think it was a good day. To be yeah, fair. it normally was. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget. I think it was the first season back in the championship. I think we beat Wigan in the last minute or whatever. Was it Wigan? One, Wigan 2-1. Two, two, one. One. Yeah, I won it was like 91 yeah. and 96, wasn't it? I won like a nice bet as well. I had a corner and I needed a loot and win <laughs> in a corner. And obviously we got the corner and scored from that. And it was a good day around. I think I went to the pub, got absolutely slaughtered. <laughs> spent my hundred odd quid. That was a big big win, that one as well. Yeah, massive. Obviously you look back on certain days like that and you think they were the important ones. But I mean, oh, so, there's so many. I could so many. Pick out so many. Well, let us know what your favourite game is, a Luton fan. You've witnessed what? Live. And also... Uh, the best goal you've ever seen Luton score. We'd love to hear your opinion watching now. Leave a comment below on YouTube if you're watching right now or if you're listening, uh, head over to our Twitter over in the town. Uh, Huddersfield tomorrow or tonight as you're listening to this. It's come around quickly. I completely forgot we were even playing tonight and you look at the league table and I know in the championship you can't take league positions into it but Huddersfield have had a terrible start to the season but we know from last year playing them what, four times yeah. Did we, we scored one goal against them in them four games? We owe them though. We owe them. Especially yeah. after that last, that second leg, sorry. Yeah. We definitely owe them. And we you know them. what? I'm hoping that our home form has taken a turn for the better. Mm-hmm. Now we've had that first home win. It'd be nice to have back-to-back home wins, wouldn't it? So I'm really optimistic that we are going to just put them to bed, hopefully. That's, what, that's what I'm hoping. We make a statement if we win tomorrow of... We maybe had an iffy start to the season, but now we're really finding our form. Sorry, just, uh, sorry, it just made me laugh at it. What I did? It's just the fact sorry, that what? Hey, eh? what? What made you laugh? No, it's just the fact that we had this conversation like the other week. Obviously, they said give it like ten, twelve games, and we'll see where we're at or whatever else. I think we're at about ten, twelve games, don't we? I think we're at no, I don't know, nine, ten. So the problem is but, that yeah. So, know. but what we're saying is that when you said, "Oh, have we had a good start to say he's been pretty poor, really," and all of a sudden, after two games again, three, three or two, two or three wins. But that's my thing. And I, I said this on Friday, 
it's like Nathan Jones will sit there and he'll bash fans for saying we should be doing this, we should be doing this, but then goes in his post match and goes, we should have beaten Wigan, we shouldn't have lost a commentary, and it's like that's all we're saying. Oh yeah, yeah and I, and that's what I think. Last last time on the podcast or time before, you look at that Wigan game, you look at that commentary game, go, could we be four points better off right now? You probably say, yeah, yeah, absolutely, four points better off. Yeah, and the difference, you know, the problem is that they're still so close between you know the bottom half of the table and the top half of the table. One win puts you up there. One defeat, you know, will we'll drop you back in the, in the bottom half. So at the moment, I think we're doing all right. And I think, you know, we can push on. And we're, we're certainly, yeah, yeah. We're certainly I mean, showing class at the moment. So let's fair, I think we're on 16 points. I think it's 11 games, isn't it? After Yeah, 11 games played, I think, 16 points. If you average it out, and obviously over 46 games, you're probably looking at about 70 points, surely. 60 odd points. 11 games, projected. 16 points. Yeah, and so yeah, it's it's not a bad. It, I think the only I think that sometimes as football fans we look at it and go, our home record isn't great. We're doing pretty poor at home, but yeah, if you look at our away record, it's it's sublime. Let's face, no, it is uh, the incredible. Time, I think the tide will turn at home. Uh, there's no reason why we can't push on from the the brilliant victory we had against Blackburn and make sure that we beat Huddersfield at the weekend, and oh, sorry, on Tuesday night. This is what we need. We need another win, yeah, to cement that sort yeah, of like look. Just get oh, that going. going. Pick it up now. And then, yeah. we, then we head to the next game thinking, well, now we've won three on the bounce. Let's hope, you know, we get a good result uh, at West Brom. But tomorrow night, please, can we just beat Huddersfield? Please. So we beat Huddersfield, going to West Brom with loads of confidence because I reckon you look at West Brom potentially being a home defeat to Luton away from sacking their manager, potentially. I think they definitely definitely be gone. I think so. But look, it's going to be. I mean, if we if we win few days in it, we beat Huddersfield right, and we get a point at West Brom. Perfect week, hundred percent. Because we got Perfect. a real tough time coming up, though, haven't we? Do you take two points from the next two? No, I want three points minimum from the next two. Yeah, three points minimum, and that's against Huddersfield, and then beat QPR. Oh yeah, please, we, we owe them as well, oh, don't we? Please, you know. You know, if ever there's a team we need to beat. Would you lo- would you take losing the next four to beat Watford away? No, <laughs> shut up, fuck's sake. Not, Look, we're sorry. getting closer. I've got to ask the question every week. No. No. Absolutely not. You can keep asking me that question, right? Every single ask, week, ask every single the, day, every single hour of you like, it would not change. If Absolutely you said, not. If you said next podcast, would you take losing to Norwich and beating Watford? I'd yeah, take that. I'll take that. But I'm not, I'm not going to lose four games to, to beat them. All right, would you take only six points from the next four games if it meant beating Watford? Well, yeah, why not? Six points. So you beat Huddersfield, yeah. beat QPR, beat Lose Watford. to West Brom, lose to Norwich and beat Watford, yeah? Happy with that? I'll, I'll take that. Three draws, one win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just as long as we I'll beat I'll take Watford, that, to be fair. Nice. Winning against Huddersfield, draw, draw, draw. A hundred percent, I'll take that. We'll, well be, we'll be uh, getting nervous as it gets closer. Very nervous. We'll be two weeks and six days away. <laughs> it's coming around quick. It's coming around quick. It's going to be good. Um, that's all we've got time for today. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you've never seen us before, go over to YouTube, Oh in the Town, search us up and uh, go and watch the podcast live right there. Uh, Huddersfield tonight. Score predictions, isn't it? I reckon, what do you reckon? 2-0 win? Can we do it again? Oh, we're doing score predictions again. Already, well, yeah, no, just what do you think it's going to be? We're going to win? Leave some involved this time, boys. Yeah. Go for it. I think that Luton will win... 3-0. Yes, I hope so. Ooh, I'm going for a 2-0 win. I'll take a 2-0, 100%. Two nil? Let yeah. us what you know. Uh, let, us, let, us, let us know. <laughs> it's Actually, late, you know what? You're it's going 2-0. I'm going 1-0. One 1-0. Nil. One nil, well, let us know what you think the score is going to be tomorrow. Leave a comment below on YouTube or let us know on socials over in the town. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next week.